Hi guys, this is Leah with Scott Leroy Marketing and in today's tip video I'm going to show you how you can create a loop in about 10 minutes or less. Now I know that when you have a deal it is very time sensitive and sometimes you don't have time to watch the entire dot loop training video so I wanted to make this short version just cut to the chase for all the basics that you need to, need to know in order to create a loop and get started with your transaction right away. So the first thing that you're going to do is log into your .loop account and the best way to do that is to log into mykw.kw.com and that's where I am on my screen here. Again, that's mykw.kw.com. If you're not sure of your username and password, feel free to email us at support at scottleroymarketing.com. We'd be happy to help you reset that if needed. I know you have a million passwords to remember, so feel free to shoot us a message. And we'll click login here. And now as you log into MyKW, you'll want to focus your attention on the top center eEdge control panel box where you'll see My Transactions on the top right of that box. Let's go ahead and click on where it says Start My Transactions. Okay, so the blue link there, we're going to go ahead and click Start My Transactions. And that should take you to your dot loop account right away. Now if it prompts you to log into your dot loop account, feel free to go ahead and do that and then it should link your dot loop to my KW so you don't have to log in in the future. Okay. Um, big thing that you'll want to know when you log in is you'll want to make sure that it says premium on the top left of your account. If your dot loop account does look different than mine right now, you may be in the old dot loop home screen. So if your dot loop account looks like this, Okay, that's totally fine. I see premium on the top left. This is the older dot loop account, or dot loop home screen rather. They are rolling everyone over to the new dot loop home screen. So if you'd like to follow along with this video, I'm going to teach it from the new dot loop home screen. But don't worry, you can always switch back to this if you prefer it. But for now to follow along, if you want to go ahead and click here for early access, the new and improved loops page. So that's the message on the slightly darker black bar. So where it says click here for early access to new and improves, improved loops page, that will take you over to the new dot loop home page. Okay. Now if you've been an agent for a little bit and you prefer that other dot loop home screen, no worries. You can always click on your headshot or initial on the top right of your dot loop account and you'll have the option to switch to old dot loop. Okay. So that transition is not permanent yet. But eventually dot loop will be moving everyone over to this new dot loop home screen so it doesn't hurt to go ahead and learn it now when you log in if you're a new agent and you're just trying to learn dot loop you might not have any loops here quite yet and that's totally normal the first thing that you'll want to do is go ahead and click add loop on the top right okay but uh, one more quick note if you do not see premium on the top left of your account here Go ahead and email support at scottleroymarketing.com. Let us know that your dot loop account is not connected to your market center and we can get that done for you right away. It's really important that you do see premium on the top left so that you have access to all of your market center forms in your account and have access to all of the features in dot loop. So go ahead and click on add loop on the top right, that blue button here. Okay, and that will get you started on adding your first loop. What a loop is is an online file. So you'll create a loop per property that you sell. So for example, if you're representing a client who's selling their home with you and then buying the next home, it's going to be two different loops because it's two different properties. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and click Add Loop on the top right. And you have four main steps that you'll need to do in order to create a loop. Okay, so let's quickly go ahead and do this. Property, address, or MLS number, okay? So of course if you don't if you're representing the buyer you won't know the property address quite yet. No worries, you can name it the buyer's name for now. So it's, it's easy to change. If you do know the property address, we do want to go ahead and name it the property address if at all possible. All right, so go ahead and name it the property address. And click continue on the bottom right.
In step two here, you do have the option to select a loop template. These loop templates are super helpful if you have those available. What it will do is it will add all the preliminary forms that you need to get started on your transaction so you don't have to go hunting for those. If you do not have any te loop templates available, there's nothing wrong with your account necessarily. It just means your office doesn't utilize this tool. However, if you do have the option, I would highly suggest selecting a loop template that applies to the property. So if you have a listing loop or sales loop option, go ahead and select that. I'm going to go ahead and leave that blank just so we're all on the same page. And click continue on the bottom right. Just a quick tip, if at any moment I'm going too fast, of course, feel free to pause the video so you can follow it along on your end. And uh, then you can always play it to uh, catch back up here. So we'll click continue on the bottom right. You do have the option to upload a photo of the home if you would like to. You can always come back to do this as well. So since we are doing this in an expedited fashion, I'm going to go ahead and leave this unuploaded. But you can always add a photo of the home if you would like to. Not a necessary step, so I'm going to go ahead and click on Done on the bottom right. And it will show you your loop. So you can now go ahead and click on the loop right here. So you can click on that cute little home. Or you can click on View Loop on the bottom right. There was a blue button there. And that will take you into your loop right away. Now there's a couple main things that you'll need to do to get started on your transaction. Okay, so first of all, we'll see the document section on the very top of your screen. And that is where you'll be spending most of your time adding documents to your loop, preparing those forms, sending it to your clients to sign, and so forth. All right, on the bottom here, we have this people section. All right, so the first thing that you'll need to do is go ahead and scroll to the bottom of your loop, and we'll want to add the people to our loop. Okay, so you'll want to add your clients to the loop if you need them to electronically sign. So we would do that by clicking Add Person, that red Add Person button. And we'll want to go ahead and put in our client's name. So you'll need three main things, their full name, their email address, and their role. So go ahead and add in your client's name, their email address. and their role. Okay, so role on the bottom right here. This is an absolutely necessary step in order for the system to allow your client to electronically sign. Okay, so very, very necessary. Make sure you click role, and you'll typically select either buyer or seller. And click add person on the bottom right. Okay, so I now see my client has been added to the loop here. Okay, and I'll always see the admin and then my name in here as well as the agent. Okay, next to your name, let's go ahead and change where it says none to either buying agent or listing agent, whatever would pertain in this loop. Okay, of course you can complete you can repeat that process if you have if this client has a spouse or there are other people in the transaction, you can t continue clicking Add Person on the top right here to add more people to your loop. Now let's go ahead and scroll back up to the Document section here where we have a folder. So you should at least have one folder added in. If you added a loop template, you may have more than one folder. If you are not currently seeing these three blue boxes, go ahead and click on Add Document to the far right of any folder name and that will make these three blue boxes display. So these three blue boxes is how you'll add in documents to your loop. The main two ways that we're going to cover is the templates option and the browse option. Okay, templates will pull in documents uh, that are preloaded in your dot loop account uh, by your market center staff. So those are blank forms in the template section. The browse option, if you have a uh, all of your paperwork done in a paper file. So you're holding on to the paperwork in your hands. What you can do is you can scan that paperwork onto your computer. You'll want to save that paperwork, let's say to your desktop for example. And then you can click browse, the second option here, to browse your computer. Okay, and you can find wherever you have that, that saved on your computer. And you'll just simply double click on that folder, okay, double click on that PDF, 
in that form that you're trying to add in and it will pull that into your loop right away okay so again that method is used if you have the paper file let's say in your hand again step one you would scan that to your computer and save it you could then click add document on the far right of any folder name click browse it will browse your computer and you can double click on that item to pull it in right away Okay, and Dotloop only accepts PDFs, just a heads up, so you'll have to make sure that's a PDF to add it to your loop. All right, but if you need to get blank forms, that will be that first option where it says templates here. You'll see it says add an interactive form by selecting one from templates. So I'm going to go ahead and click that option, that first blue box. And on the left hand side, you'll see a bunch of red form folders going down your screen. Okay, and these are like categories of your forms. So there's a form folders. So go ahead and select the form folder on the left hand side that you believe would have the form that you need. If you're not sure what forms you need, check in with your office staff. They may have checklists for you that tell you all the forms you need for your listing or for your sale and so forth. So that's definitely very useful to find the forms. Okay, my form folders on the left hand side will be different than yours. I'm in a North Carolina.loop account. So depending on where you are, that will be different for each market center. So go ahead and scroll through on the left hand side, whichever form folder you need, and click on that. It will turn it black to indicate that's selected. And it will show you all the forms in that folder. So from here, you can click search on the top of your screen. Okay, there's a search bar, so I can search for the word, let's say, listing. To pull up all the forms and that have the word listing in the title. I can simply click on the checkbox to the left of the form name that I need and click copy to pull that into my loop right away. Okay, so I'm just looking for a listing agreement. Of course, you'll want to use the search bar to search for whatever the form name is that you're looking for. And again, you'll just simply click on the checkbox to pull on any of the forms that you may need and click copy on the bottom right. Okay. Again, I know this is a little fast. However, you feel free to click pause on the video so that you can follow along and then you can click play whenever you're ready. And click OK on the bottom right. And that will pull you back to your loop and you'll see the form that you just brought in. Okay, In this case, I brought in a listing agreement. So to start working on that listing agreement, I'll simply go ahead and click on that form name to pull that open right away. Now typically you'll see this autofill box display whenever it's a template. And you do want to fill out this autofill box. This is your best friend. We like the autofill box. It does a lot of work for you. Any information that we enter in in this autofill box will not only autofill it onto this form, but every future form that you bring into this loop specifically. And starting out at the top here, roles, very important. It does need to say seller one and have your client's name next to it. If you do not see your client's name next to seller one or whatever the role may be, they will not be able to electronically sign. So I can't stress that enough how important it is. If you do not see your client's name in line with the role, no worries. Feel free to click select person. You can either select your client's name from that list or click add person on the bottom here to add them in if you haven't already. This is a form that you need to sign. You will see need to see your name in line with your role as well. So we do have the property address information, so you can enter that in as well. Okay, again, any information that you enter in here will autofill into this form in every future form. It's also very helpful if you're a newer agent and you're not sure where on the form the, this information goes. Dot loop knows. So if you type this in here where it prompts you for it, dot loop will put it on the necessary field on the form. So it's a great learning tool and time saver. So on the very bottom right, you will see an option to click autofill, that red button there. So let's go ahead and click that to autofill any information you put into this form. And again, if you are still working on autofilling this information, feel free to pause the video to finish that up and click autofill whenever you're ready. All right, so to prepare the form, to have, send that off, to share that to your clients, it's as easy as clicking to start typing, to fill in any of the text fields. 
Okay, any fields that are yellow means that did autofill, in case you're wondering. If you need to click any checkboxes, that's as simple, simple as clicking to check. Any date fields, you'll notice a little calendar that you can click on to select the date. Right, the important part on the very bottom, it is really important that you see your seller's initials in print. They are whatever your client's initials in print in any initial boxes and signature boxes that they need to sign that indicates to you that you set it up correctly. If you were to print this form, these fields would be blank here. Okay, Having it in print does again indicate to you that you set it up correctly, that they will be able to electronically sign. So once you have completely filled out the form and we have checked over the, any initial boxes to make sure that we see their initials in print, Okay, once it's actually signed, it'll be in cursive with a time and date stamp. So it does look very different. But we do want to make sure that we see our client's initials in print to make sure they can electronically sign. Okay, it can't just say seller. It must say the client's initials. So if it does just say seller in both these boxes or buyer for that matter, just come back up to the autofill box on the top black toolbar and make sure they have a role. Okay, that's why the roles are so important here. All right, so again, once you have completely filled out the form, right, it's really important that you fill out the form first before having your client electronically sign it. Once they sign the form, if you try and add anything to the form, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, it will erase their signatures because it thinks they didn't sign for that. So it makes sense. So a couple options here. We can just print out the form. So if you're going on a listing appointment and you want to bring this listing agreement, you can come up to File and click Download on the top black toolbar. Okay, or Print. You print it straight from here. That will download it from Dot Loop so you can save it to your computer or printing it will, of course, print that out so you can bring it on your appointment. All right, alternatively, the main point of dot loop is uh, so that you can send this form via email so your clients can click to electronically sign that. So a quick overview of that is in the share button on the very top right, a big red share button. It might ask you if you would like to save the form first. You would want to click yes. In the share screen here, so main things you'll need to know, it shows you the document you're sharing to make sure if you're sharing more than one document, okay, make sure you're sharing the correct document. Who has access? Okay, it will always show yourself and your admin at your office. So if you can't remember if you already shared the form to your client, they would be entered in here. Adding people. Okay, so this is what we where we really need to do some work here. So we do see our client's name and we see that he is assigned as a seller and 11 fields assigned. So he can sign 11 fields. Very important. We want that. It, typically, you'll want to go ahead and click on Can Sign. Right? That is the default that enables him to only be able to sign the form. They can't change any information on the form, such as you know your commission rate. Right? Typically, you don't want your client to be able to change any of the information. You'll just want him to be able to sign what you have filled in as a professional. There are some other times that you would use these options if you hover your mouse over those options, those share options. It will give you a little overview on what that does right, and when you would want to use that, that share option. I go into depth on that in the dot loop 101 video, so feel free to check that out. I also have dot loop notes. If you need that, feel free to email support at scottleroymarketing.com and I'd be happy to send over those notes. You can put attention my name, which is Leah, and I will send that right over. All right, so we have our client added in here. He can sign 11 fields, so great, all is well. And I'll simply just click Share on the bottom right here. It gives me this confirmation that this document has been shared, and we're now waiting on others. We're waiting on our client to sign that. All right, so that was a quick overview on how to uh, start a loop, how to add uh, forms to your loop, uh, whether it be a PDF or a template, how to prepare that form and send it to your client via email so they can electronically sign. I know that was just a quick overview. Feel free to check out slmtraining.com for the dot loop 101 and 201 video tutorials that goes way more in depth into the dot loop system. There's a lot of great tricks and tips that you can utilize. So feel free to check that out again on slmtraining.com. If you have any questions at all, feel free to let us know at support at scottleroymarking.com. I hope you have a great rest of your day.